My first guest tonight is an Emmy Award winner you know from the newsroom, The Looming Tower, and of course, Dumb and Dumber. He currently stars on Broadway in To Kill a Mockingbird. Please welcome back to The Late Show our friend Jeff Daniels. <laughs> You got Bernie down. You got Bernie down. <laughs> yes. That's the new go-to. A little bit. A little oh, bit. A little bit. It's, it's, We're it's going to see a lot of Bernie in the next few months. <laughs> it's, e it's easy pickings. Um, uh, you look like a, a man of the people in this outfit. You, you're not some fancy guy in a suit. You got your jeans on. You got the sleeves rolled up. You're ready to go to work for America. Will you ever run for office? Would you ever run for office? No. Jerry? God, no. Why not? I don't know enough. That doesn't stop most no, of the it people. No, it doesn't. You do got, this. You look at these guys, and you got to know about. You got to know about. You, you got to know too much. I know. I know what I want. I know what I don't want. Okay. You know? But but no, I don't know enough. And I think it should be left to people who know how government runs, and who can get things done in the the the, the political system and the government we I, have. I it believe shouldn't so. Shouldn't be some guy. I'm all, who I'm all is for like popular. Exactly. There he is. I'm all, I'm all for, like, people shaking things up, but it would be nice if people knew, you know, uh, how things get done yeah. so you can actually push it through. Yeah. Now, I just want to say right off the bat, thank you so much for being here because this is a school night for you. It is. You just, you did, you did an entire performance of Killing Mockingbird where you brilliantly embody Atticus Finch right here. There he is. There is, uh, there is on Broadway <laughs> at the Schubert Theater. And if I'm not mistaken, sir, you have not one, not one, but two performances tomorrow. I do. So you're, 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 you're uh, as my people would not say, a mensch to be here. A mensch. I love being mensch, yeah. mensch like. The, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 I was going to be up till two anyway. So it didn't really matter. Do you get a little, you, you get, get spun. You get, you get, yeah, you you get sure. spent. You oh, do absolutely. Sorkin and you just, you're spinning till two in the morning. What, what does, what does doing Sorkin, because you've done several Sorkins at this point, yeah. you've done multiple Sorkins, um, what is it, what does it do to your brain to be talking like that? The way he writes for long periods of time. It's just, uh, yeah, I mean, we're in our ninth month now. At the end of our ninth month, we did our number 305 tonight, and and that, that's a lot. It's not, you know, it's not years. But I it, give you, I'll give it to you. But Why not? yeah, okay. Why not? Um, but you know, eight times a week, the same thing, the same thing. Yeah. You you get you you get to do you 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 know it better, so you can let it go sooner. But it still is like the Indy 500 up there, because he he writes. In a way that it flows and it moves and it moves and it moves, and you get to the end of it. And even if you've done it 300 times, you don't just go go home and turn the lights out. You're still spinning. Well, having done it this many times, um, because the the play and 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 the source material of the book is about um, different people in a, in the same community reacting to accusations of. Uh, Violence and and uh, essentially racial profiling and how, how racism is dividing the people in this town. Given, say, the last three weeks, where Donald Trump's racism has become more overt in his attacks on various politicians and, and communities around the United States, does that change the the tone of the audience when they come in? Do you think that changes what they get from the play or what they're looking for? Because there's actually, there's a, there's a really, one of the most brilliant moments in the play is when, uh, which, is, which is new to this play, which is you and Calpurnia, Atticus and Calpurnia, talking about to what degree do you have to understand the side of the oppressor or how much do you have to just stand up for the oppressed? Yeah, I, I think a lot of people, uh, and we felt this early, way back last November, December, but especially now, because suddenly Baltimore's in the news. And, and they all, they, we had 1,400 people tonight who know that Baltimore's in the news. And so there are li lines that land, you know, more so than maybe six months ago, maybe. This, Mock, To Kill a Mockingbird, the play, um, you feel it. And we're, we're, it's a mixed audience, but there's a lot of white people there. A lot of white liberal America, a lot of white America sitting out there. And this play is like a right hook to their chin. You watch the movie, you read the book, you feel the play. When Tom Robinson gets 
sent to jail. He's 100% innocent. And the only reason he's going to jail is because he's black. You see Tom Robinson chained up and walking across the sta stage on his way to the electric chair. And it's a long cross. You feel that. And America needs to feel that stuff. America needs to do better than look at that picture of that father and that daughter in the river. And you tell, you tell me that you're going to go into the voting booth and you're going to go, they shouldn't have crossed the river. Now, there are people out there that believe that. Go ahead, vote for him. Do it. But I'm, I, and, I, and I can't wait for, we've, what, this is in the second debate out of 20? Jesus. You know, um, um, I, uh, whittle it down, but we need somebody that can take this guy on. Well, that can you, punch him in the face. It was in, <laughs> we'll have a moment more here, but there's something that's very specific to your life that would be helpful here is that the, the debate was by no accident in Michigan yeah. tonight, which Donald Trump only won by around 10,000 votes. As a native Michigander, what do you think the people of Michigan want out of a president? What are they looking there for were, in the next president? There, you got it. The, the Democrats on the stage tonight and the stage tomorrow night have to talk to the white and black Americans who lost their manufacturing jobs. All they did was work their ass off and have GM, or you pick a corporation, send it to Mexico, send it to China, because there's a new group that matters more, and they're called shareholders. And I can get that car made for 28 cents in Mexico. Done. And I don't have to feel badly about it, because you know what? It's just business. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You got to talk to those people, because they got screwed. And Trump was the only guy in 2016 who said, I'm going to bring your manufacturing job back. That one you had, not a new one, the one you had, I'm going to bring it back. Well, he hadn't done it. And so they've been lied to again. They don't know who to believe. You need to talk to them, and you need to tell them that you're not going to raise their taxes and to get what you need done, all these things. You need, you need to talk to them, because they're the ones that are going to put an end to this madness. Those, that 20%, not me, not you, not you, not the Trump people, that 20% that voted for Trump, that didn't want to, that... 87,000 votes in Michigan had Democrats on the undercard and blank on the president. 87,000. She lost by 11,000 votes. Didn't talk to him. You got to you got to get to those people, otherwise, uh, it's going to be bad news. November 2020. Jeff, thanks so much for being here. You're very welcome. Good to see you. To, to Kill a Mockingbird is on Broadway at the Schubert Theater. Jeff Daniels, everybody. We'll be right back with MSNBC's Katie Turr and Jacob Soberoff. Stick around.